Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com and in this video, I wanna introduce you to a brand new exciting feature or addition to the SketchUp ecosystem called Live Components. So Live Components are very similar to Dynamic Components in that they're parametric and can be customized using various sliders and uh, drop-down menus to get a really custom uh, component. So uh, in this video, we're gonna dive into kind of everything we know about live components so far. So yeah, live components can really be seen as a modern replacement or implementation of dynamic components. So if you're not familiar with dynamic components, this is an existing feature inside of SketchUp. So we can right click and go to dynamic components and check out a user interface where we can see various drop down options and that can resize um, dynamic components. Um, you can also change you know, some some components have other options, but you can see how you can kind of create um, a custom component based off of these menus just by selecting different options in the menus. But the problem is dynamic components haven't been updated in a really long time. Um, they are a little bit buggy and have a lot of limitations. So I'm really excited about this new live components feature. So on the forum the other day, the SketchUp team announced live components. So live components are available in SketchUp Free, SketchUp Shop, and SketchUp Pro. So to view live components, you wanna just go to Window, 3D Warehouse, and you wanna click on this magnifying glass uh, icon to go to the search results page. And then if you scroll down over here under the advanced section, you can filter for live components and then click on models. And that's gonna show you all of the live components that are currently available. So right now there's only 63 live components. So it is limited to um, a sample set of components that the SketchUp team has created. So um, this is the initial release of live components and it's actually being released under a brand new um, subset of SketchUp called SketchUp Labs. So in the forum announcement, um, they also announced this new program called SketchUp Labs. And so what SketchUp Labs is going to be is kind of like a public beta um, experimental feature um, program. So they'll be able to release features that aren't quite feature complete, but they'll be able to release it to the public. So, you know, you and I can play around with them and provide feedback and test the features and um, hopefully guide the development process um, over time. So live components are the first thing that are added to SketchUp labs and because of the limited release just keep in mind this isn't like the full feature set so right now we are just limited to these uh, basic kind of example uh, components that the SketchUp uh, team has created to play around with so once you find a live component that you want to uh, try out you click on it and then you can configure it in uh, the browser so eventually you will be able to do this configuration directly inside of SketchUp, but for now, um, they've only implemented the cloud version of the customizer. So you can use the various sliders to change different parameters, and then there are drop downs to change uh, some more advanced parameters. You can see I can navigate around, I can orbit the model, and then there's also uh, different, different color selectors for uh, different parts of this component as well. And then, so once you've completed the customization, you click the download button, and that's gonna download the SketchUp uh, file that so, so you can basically import it into your SketchUp model or open it directly inside of SketchUp. So once you have the component inside of the model, um, you know, it's basically just like any other SketchUp component. So at this point, um, you don't have the 
ability to reconfigure this component inside of SketchUp. But if we look at the forum post, um, we can see that it is a feature that they're um, looking to add. So this is the first step towards having that same configuration capability directly inside of SketchUp. Now, the other thing is, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, how do you create your own live component? And again, because this is an early release of the feature, um, that's not available right now, but it says we are working on a solution to allow customers to create their own live components. In the meantime, we're also developing more pre-built live components for you to use in your SketchUp models. So um, we have a lot to look forward to with this release, but I think this is probably gonna end up being one of my favorite SketchUp features if we see it developed the way I envision this um, to be developed, because this has a lot of potential. So one thing that's interesting about this feature is it's actually built on a platform called Materia. And Materia was part of an acquisition that Trimble made of a company called Matter Machine. And so I did a little bit of research. Well, I just I just Googled it, guys. It was not, <laughs> it wasn't hard. Um, so with a little bit of Googling, um, I did find the website. Unfortunately, it does no, it no longer works. But I did find this really interesting interview with uh, the the founder of Matter Machine. Now, keep in mind this is dated in 2014, so this is really outdated. However, there are a few screenshots of the software that kind of gives us a glimpse into potentially what. Um, what the authoring capabilities might look like. And so there's there's a few things that I find interesting. I'm gonna to link to this in the description if you wanna read the whole thing. But um, first of all, notice how, and, and of course the quality of these images uh, are really poor, but it's almost like a node-based system. Um, and so here's another image. So yeah, you can see all these nodes. And, and actually, if we scroll down, we see this question, how complex is it to enable matter machine functionalities on a digital design? So currently it's non-trivial. It's much like using Grasshopper or Houdini. So with people who don't know, I'm actually not that familiar with Grasshopper, but it is a, a, it says an algorithmic modeling uh, feature set for Rhino, which is another 3D modeling program. But Grasshopper is a very popular kind of parametric way to create um, 3D models. And then Houdini is another uh, node-based uh, 3D modeling workflow. So, so that's really cool. That's really interesting to see how, you know, potentially what the, what the authoring side or creation side of live components will look like. The other thing that I found really cool um, with this interview is, the mindset behind this whole platform was not just built to create a pretty 3D model. It's actually built from the mindset of full um, manufacturing. So not only are you designing a parametric 3D model that an end user can customize, but once that customization is complete, they envisioned um, and, and had some implementation of that being able to export directly to a CNC machine, for instance. So if we so if we check this out, is Matter Machine already designed and ready to interact with dynamic supply chains and production? As far as production, yes, to some degree, we deliver bills of materials, machinable CAD files, resource flow management, and other data uh, right out of the engine. That is incredible. If we're gonna be seeing uh, those types of features um, implemented, now this is all speculation based off of this one interview, but um, I, I think you have to agree that this is really exciting and kind of um, opens up a lot of potential for SketchUp from you know manu manufacturing standpoint, uh, product manufacturers starting to build their catalogs, in SketchUp, I mean, this is kind of the stuff that we 
were hoping we would have seen with dynamic components. Um, but, you know, it we did to a certain extent, but I think this opens things up a lot wider. So it has a lot more potential. Now, for example, one big limitation with dynamic components uh, was the lack of ability to do global edits. So for example, imagine you have a kitchen and you have a cabinet component that is, um, let's say it's a live component and it's copied throughout your model, but naturally most of those components will be unique because they're different widths. You'll have different door and drawer configurations. So each of those components need to be unique. Otherwise, you know, you'd change the width of one of them and then all of them would change. But if you think about it, there's actually a lot of common characteristics that are shared between all of those cabinets. So for instance, the color, whether it's painted or a natural wood finish, um, the door and drawer style, that's a common characteristic throughout all of the cabinets, even if they're different size cabinets. So that was one thing that was really missing from dynamic components, but I asked the question in the forum post and I did get confirmation. So, um, you know, asking about making global edits and Bryce, who is on the SketchUp team, uh, replied saying, we view this as being able to edit common parameters across different objects. Wait a minute. So this is like, this is even above and beyond what I was saying. This is, if I'm interpreting this correctly, being able to edit common parameters across different objects. So that would mean like, let's say you have a, a table live component and then you have a cabinet live component. They both might have a height parameter. So based off of what Bryce said, potentially we would be able to select both of those components and change the height parameter for both of them at the same time, even though they're two completely different objects. That's really cool. And um, I'm really excited to see how this um, feature is, is developed over time. So anyways, let me know what you think about this new feature. Um, explore the different components in the 3D warehouse. You can access this in SketchUp for Web, SketchUp Free, SketchUp Shop, um, SketchUp for Schools. I would think they're in there as well. Um, it's a little weird to get to them right now, but I'm sure as uh, the library grows and, and when they introduce the authoring tools, it's going to be um, a, a big flood of, of really cool components that we can play around with. All right. That's all I got for you in this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.